heritage schools. So I am wanted to start around 1000 gurukuls and at least 1 lakh students will be studying who will become either the householder married or a sannyasi and hold the sangha, spread the sangha. So it is a big job where too many people are needed to be involved. It's a choice people make, that's all. You see, why I demanded 100% of the commitment? Because, for example, one person gets up and tells in the meeting, I'll raise this much of fund for the Gurukul. So trusting him, few people who wanted to volunteer their time and want to do full-time mission, I'll tell them, all right, you resign the job, come away. I have a place for you, head, uh, you can head this uh, temple and start. See, I am taking a lot of risky decisions. So, that is the reason I wanted a clear, committed team which feels responsible for what they are uttering. So, when you commit, you see, whenever I tell a person to resign the job and come away, become part of the organization, I visualize whether I have a full-time job for him and take care of him and whether the organization is strong enough to sustain him forever. So all these calculations I do, only then I invite people. So there are many people now wanted to be full-time part of the Sangha. They don't have money, but they can give their time and life and run it. So there are some people who, want, who are committing to raise money. So all this, I have to connect and equate. For that, I need the group which is really standing by their word. That's the reason I was so strong when I said the words, if I am the only priority come, not even top priority, because even the top priority you will change after 10 minutes, like a flight timing or the <laughs> flight detail changes in the airport. And it's not that immediately I'm going to tell everyone to pack their bags and come there or whatever. But whatever words they utter should be hundred, they should be hundred percent committed to that. That's the reason I was so strong about it. And I also wanted to have only that people who are, even after listening to all those strong words, who, who feel that they are committed, only that group I wanted there. The people who have come here, you all are here to experience it. So my mission is not just giving you experience, producing people who will give experience. My mission is both. So yesterday, the session which I was having was one step beyond this program where I am really looking at what can I do to reach out to the world more and more way these truths, this lifestyle, the whole thing, how to reach out. So that is the way I was working. So be complete about it, don't be incomplete. See, all big work is not done by masses. It is by the people who are intense. Mass is moved by intense people. Intense may be any small number, but they move the mass. Quickly, you have to finish all the questions so that I can move to the process. Mm. Go ahead. Swamiji, um, for me and Bhagwan, what exactly stops us from making decision? This is what exactly happening in our life also. It's uh, something, you know, we want to do this, want to be a part of it, but when the time comes, it just, I mean, not able to make the decision. I'm Yesterday you missed? Yes, yeah, Swamiji. Oh, over. Now nothing, no explanation will work. Leave it. Go through the Shivoham process. Next. If I am just sitting like this with few hundred, few hundred, few hundred and giving Shivoham experience, I'll be reaching only few thousands a year. But I am very clear, I wanted to reach millions of people 
so that that vedic tradition is revived people are having more and more powers consciousness spiritual energy peace bliss joy everything so when i want to do that then i have to create more people to do that it is like a teachers creation job so for that job i wanted few people to come help me support me see i am planning for as i said 1 lakh kids growing either to become a householder or married who will reach out the this vedic tradition to the world in my case so much of abuse that i go through but even then i stood straight i know what it does to your consciousness it is in a through a body language i am making a statement i am with you to your bio memory i am giving the assurance i am with you that is the reason i have not denied you guys that i have not denied even after going through so much abuse that's all things can be very simple in life if we decide to keep it simple <laughs> swami yes which side uh, left <laughs> please go ahead uh, shivoham and shivaganam is same or shivoham and shivaganam shivagana no shivagana is like a person who radiates shivoham is called shivagana and uh, shivashudram gana means who is filled with that heaviness gana in exactly the word gana in sanskrit means whose three dimension is filled with that concept shiva gana means his three dimension length breadth depth is filled with shiva and the shiva sutra explain huh? about shiva sutra may explain about shiva sutra is the science of shivoham experience now whatever you are going through many of the process and techniques are from shiva sutras yes shiva bhuta is one and the same shiva bhuta shiva gana is just two names of the same see when you are in the physical matter body you are called shiva gana and radiate shivoham if you are radiating shivoham but do not have the physical flesh and bone body you are called shiva bhuta all the rishis are shiva bhutas because they don't have a physical flesh and body like agastya angirasa bharadwaja narada they all uh, don't have a physical body but they radiate shivoham experience so, so they are called shiva bhutas bhuta means in sanskrit the exact meaning is element element means the water fire uh, earth and air and space that is element so who are radiating shivoham experience but having the body which is element is shiva bhuta who has a body which has a length breadth depth and radiates shivoham is shiva gana these are all just technical terms swami ji to your uh, right near the back right yes here. go ahead um regarding yesterday's the last process we did with our hands up um my experience i didn't i didn't see any visions but at one point I'll, even though our my um hands were up for quite a while i didn't feel any pain at all or discomfort and it's like i had this overwhelming urge to move to to like dance to to move a lot um and i guess that my that is to say when the sahasrara becomes too active violently active then uh Uh, your hand feels it is too small to contain it okay that was really really um a, like an interesting experience in that i didn't feel any um any discomfort and my my question is 
See, how many of you felt that Sagasrara became open and your hands are something independent of both? That is exactly the way the, it will feel when the Sagasrara opens up. And that, that's my second question is, mm. obviously, you are opening our mm. Sagasrara. Yes. And, and therefore, does that mean we now have access to the universal that's intelligence? Mm. Not only universal intelligence, making your cognition to operate constantly with universal intelligence. Okay, thank you. Swamiji? Yes. Behind you. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. So, I'm Prima Kutind Raman from Los Angeles. Mm. Actually, after the meeting yesterday, mm. actually, I want to jump up and say yes <laughs> with my husband. <laughs> but always my biggest incompletion is my, with my family and with my job. Mm. But from the time I met, I just want to run and come behind you. <laughs> like, as if my legs are tied with the chains, then when I learned it's all my incompletions. When I went to US, I'm like a very simple, enjoying my um, medicine. I just very happy when the patients say thank you. I never expected money. Yet. So <coughs> last 20 years, I became the top doctor in Los Angeles, mm. uh, the famous surgeon, mm. and actually I make a lot of money, and after I met you, it doubled. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but I suffered to fit in that society, because mm. I always, from my heart, not um, pretending to mm. be, mm. but I, I was suffering to fit into that. So mm. when I met you, I felt a big release. Mm -hmm. I just want to go back, I want to go back, but mm. so much was holding back, mm -hmm. like what my kids, will they be happy? Mm. Or he will be, he lived more there, so. Mm -hmm. And my parents, like, mm. all that dropped me, but mm. will I be my patients, like, they love me, so. Mm. Why am I not jumping and say yes to Swamiji? Like, I couldn't sleep last night. Then, in my dream, mm. I have a chair in my satsang place. Mm. I have your photo. Mm. So you're coming and sitting there. Mm. I, was, oh, I wasn't prepared. I didn't have flowers. I didn't have anything. I didn't, Swamiji is just walking in and sitting. I'm not prepared. Like I didn't welcome him good. And I was like, so nervous. And Mukta was there. I said, bring water, man. Mm. And then you are asking me, Dosa Kuruma, like, my dad, <laughs> used, to, <laughs> my dad used to ask me and that. <laughs> the sideline I wanted everyone to know, she's my relative. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> and you said Dosa Kuruma, that's how my dad used to ask mm. me, Dosa mm. Kuruma. Mm. I was so, I woke up in the morning, I said, you know, I live, Swamiji is my first person in my life, mm. but why am I not committing? Mm. And I do that in my office, I do it in my house. From my bedroom, the walking, wherever I go, I have to see your face. Mm. Before, in my patient's room, in my office room. Mm. So I said then, after this shivoham, mm. I spend a lot of money in maintaining the doctor thing, like the driving Tesla car and all that. Mm. But by looking at all the Guruko kids, then I said, I should drop being simple and just sponsor a lot of Gurukul kids mm. and also to be part of the Sangha, like whatever you say, I want to do it. All those incompletions last night. You were there already in the meeting, na? Yes. Then yes. what? Yes. Then what else I, you are missing? <laughs> Come on. I, don't, I didn't say yes. I didn't say huh? uh, when you asked the, for the couple, we didn't get up and say yes. Come on, <laughs> that is okay. And even if you said yes, I am going to tell you only what you are doing to do. <laughs> Yeah, then I said like, okay. See, I even if you said, I would have told you, all right, manage your hospital and everything and manage the um, LA thing. That's all I'm going to say. I'm mm -hmm. not going to tell you move. No. <laughs> That's why, like so much change. See, like this. It, is, it is to see the depth of commitment because I am making decisions, m uh, taking many families and assembling. 
See, it's like a huge chariot I am assembling. You understand? So many people dedicate their life. Yes. Now you, are, you have done well and you are doing well. Don't worry. <laughs> Be rest assured. Swamiji, I, yes. I have one request. Swamiji, um, last night I feel uh, when I go back and sleep, I feel very, very heavy in the head area. That and is good. Falling into deep samadhi. Um, but at the same time, I, I feel like um, there's still doubt and fear and uh, feeling, feeling like left when, out. When so much of Kundalini process is going on, the, all the doubts, everything has to come out, no? I, I want to hear another from you. Thank you. It has to leave you and it has to say goodbye to you, bye bye to you. Swamiji, mm. this is uh, to your right, right here. Go ahead. Uh, yesterday, um, I felt like I had a jackhammer that was hammering on my brain. Mm. And um, it's good. Yeah, it was good. And uh, I mean, today I'm, I'm kind of like... Many people will be happy <laughs> to know that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> Many happy. people will be happy to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. So today... Um, <laughs> they can help remold me. <laughs> um, today I feel like um, a blob of mud. And... My whole body is vibrating and I feel very, very heavy, almost like I can hardly sit up. That is okay. Good. So I just need your blessings. Tata asked. Thank you. 